you know, one of the things that I'm really excited about is creating a organization and a team that doesn't just provide financial opportunity for somebody uh, to be able to create almost a safe haven for people for growth because there's not a lot of places where you get encouraged when you fail. And the only way I know to get great at anything is to mess up a lot. And I see so many people in life where they get older and they're so afraid to take risks because of what they're going to look like or what are people going to think. And if we can create an environment where people feel safe, where they can, it's okay. You know, we're not going to cap you at the knees just because you didn't do it right the first time. That we're going to encourage you to continue. And if we can create an environment that's safe for people to grow, then I believe the idea would be that, you know, the world will be our playground and love will be our legacy. I was born in the Bay near San Francisco. And then when I was five, we moved up to Calaveras County up in the Sierra Nevadas. We had a big 80-acre uh, Christmas tree farm I think it was just a piece of property that my parents found a good deal on it. It just happened to have a Christmas tree farm on it. It was seasonal work for us. Um, we were 30 minutes to a gas station, 45 minutes to a grocery store. So yeah, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, but uh, my parents were in the car business. So my dad was a wholesale car dealer. My mom did the back end and the bookkeeping. Self-employed, you know, my parents were self-employed. So, you know, seeing my parents work, you know, really from home, my dad traveled a lot for, you know, moving cars around and stuff like that, but, you know, they didn't go somewhere to clock in. And I really, I think that's one of the things that got me early on is that I wanted to find a way to work for myself or Hannah had that bug early on in life. So that little entrepreneurial spirit, I think, was really a large portion because of my mom and my dad. My mom is the most amazing person on the planet. Um, you know, call me mama's boy if you want. She is the strongest human I've ever met in my entire life and where she who she is today or what she had to go through, I, um, you know, I, I, I obviously, I mean, the love I have for her, but the respect that I have for her and who she's grown into is unbelievable. And if I can be an ounce like my mom, I know I did this, did, did it right. For me, growing up was uh, sports. You know, I played sports year round. So soccer, baseball, basketball, uh, basketball being my favorite. And then when I was eight, uh, my mom would actually drive an hour and a half one way to get to Sacramento to take dance classes. And I remember being in the studio doing homework and I wasn't interested in the jazz and the ballet side, but there was this bass hitting in the room next door of these new hip hop classes or street jazz classes, they called them. My mom put me in uh, the class and uh, I, I couldn't pick it up, but she wanted to teach me that things take time and patience to learn. And so, I watched one and then I took one and I, I started getting it and something clicked. And that's actually how kind of my beginning of my career in dance started was at eight. And then when I was 15, we actually moved to Central California, to San Luis Obispo, slow. And they didn't teach hip hop classes, so my mom encouraged me to start teaching. So I started teaching classes when I was 15, while I was going to high school and I, I fell in love with teaching and I fell in love with traveling. I was so fortunate we got to go on tour in China, we got to go on tour in Cuba and Mexico, and I was like, as soon as I get out of high school, this is what I want to do. So I moved down to LA when I was 17, a week after graduating, and started my dance career. That was kind of the, the, some of the best times of my life. The things I learned from dance made me who I am today. I mean, I. The success that I had in business early on in my early 20s had mostly to do with what I learned from dance. I mean, and there's so many different parallels, you know. I, one of the things is, you know, self-expression. I mean, you know, I see a lot of people that are scared to put themselves out there. And I learned at an early age to be able to do that. You know, when you're performing in front of people, you're putting yourself out there. And when you're 8 and 12, you know, you're a little more fearless, I'd say, usually when you get a little bit older. So having the confidence to start performing at an early age really helped, number one. Uh, number two, it helped me grow up quicker uh, because I was around uh, people that were much older than me. Uh, the modeling knowledge, you know, most people get classroom knowledge, um, but with dance I got modeling knowledge because everything was about watching somebody and then copying it into your body and doing it identically. 
And so when I started seeing presentations inside of network marketing, I was like, it's that's choreographed, you know, it's it's a choreographed presentation and I just need to learn the steps or learn the speech or whatever it was and then do it again and again and again and again. And then working in dance teams. I mean, that was, you know, getting a whole group of people to do something identically and do it precisely. You know, that was one of the big things I found is if when you can pass on something to somebody and have them it make a difference for them, that was that was huge. So I had a lot of practice and teaching before I even stepped foot into, you know, network marketing. So when I was 19, I was teaching a dance class and a student handed me a cassette tape. I heard this tape and these people were making all this money and they had freedom and flexibility and residual income and passive income. And I'm like, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you could have recruited me with a fishing pole. I was signing up in anything in network marketing if I thought there was the ability to have the freedom that I was looking for so desperately and had no idea how to get as a 19 year old kid. So I could travel the world and dance all over the world and you know, and have the, the choice to go where I want and eat where I want and stay as long as I want and bring my friends with me. I think you know the things that usually get me overwhelmed is when I, I'm, I tend to be more on the over responsible side where you know I feel responsible for everything and everybody and of course, in our business, when you have, uh, when you build a large team of people, and you know people are counting on you, and you want to be there for everybody, and it's, it's impossible to be everything to everybody. But you know when you kind of take on the emotions of your organization, uh, those are the, some of the times I feel overwhelmed if I feel like I'm not going to be able to, you know, live up to someone's standards, or even maybe even keep all my commitments based on the fact that I've overexerted myself and trying to do too much or be too much for too many people. Uh, some of the biggest failures in my life, is this, a, you know, like today, or are you talking about this week, this month, you know? It's tough because I look back on it and I go, what are the, you know, the biggest failures? And I go, they were the greatest opportunities for growth for something in the future. Um, but I'd say high points in my life were getting paid to do what I loved. Uh, there's some incredible moments, dancing on the Great Wall of China when I was 17 or 16 years old. Uh, the first year I earned a six-figure income. I was 23. I actually accomplished it on my 24th birthday. And I got to speak at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas in front of like 15,000 people to kind of share my story. And that was for sure a major highlight for me. Getting my, my six-figure ring here with Secret after a, a few months that was a feeling I'll never forget. It's been seven years and it hasn't left. Uh, what drives me today outside of my own you know, personal goals is to make a positive impact on the community that I'm in and ultimately, I believe, to make my mark on the world where people say that you know, he was somebody that can be an incredible example for what's possible when you choose to live your life with purpose. For me, I think the goals that I'm really excited about over the next decade is uh, creating stronger relationships and being able to build an organization that can make a larger impact on the world. Developing an organization of people that actually wants to pay it forward, that's the goal. What keeps me in network marketing today is I think what we do is bigger than network marketing. I think, I don't, I don't even really believe I, what I'm doing is network marketing, I guess in a strange way. I believe that what I'm doing is building a community of people that believe differently than most of the people that are out there, that are choosing to want to raise their standards, that aren't settling for this is as good as it gets. People that are like-minded in wanting to set goals, serve and support each other, give back, grow. So for me, I believe that what we're doing is developing a community of people that have the potential to change the world. And network marketing just happens to be a unique model or vehicle that allows that to happen in a very unique way because there aren't many places where you attract such an eclectic group of people. And a little bit of the different thinkers. Call me crazy, call me, I'm never shy of hope. You know, uh, a, a group of people that 
is not going to lower their standards just because other people decide that this is as good as it's going to get. A group of people that impossible is not in their vocabulary. The biggest things ever is just seeing people's confidence step up to a place that didn't exist before, where their relationships are changing, their communication is changing, their, their relationship with their kids and their marriage is changing. What they believe is possible out of this life has changed because they were associated in some way with us. That's the best. My name is Jesse McPherson and this is my secret.